guys, everyone's Matt Morozik, and we're gonna start doing this Spider-Man. So, um, as I did an intro video the other day, and the first thing we gotta do on this is some repairs. So, um, first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna work on getting this hand fixed right here. And then I'm going to um, work on kind of getting this web fixed. It goes in his hands. So there are a couple of pins here, so for the arm, I've got a uh, 1 8 inch uh, brass rod here that I'm going to use to uh, support this. For this, I've got a 3 32nd rod that I'm going to use to support to put this back together. So I'm going to do this one first because uh, it's easier to handle when it's not on the, the body. So it fits pretty good, but I need to put a pin in there to support it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take this brass rod. I'm going to Scuff it up. Just so the glue has something better to stick to. Just like that. Some key tips. I'm just gonna use super glue for these parts because they don't um, they aren't uh, like load bearing, like they don't support a lot of any weight. So I'm just gonna use super glue for the pins, which should be good. Um, and I'm just gonna get a uh, drill. Maybe a little overkill. My drill. And so what I'm gonna do for the that web, I guess it's a 332nd. So I'm actually gonna drill a 1 8 inch hole for that, so it's bigger. And it gives me a little more kind of wiggle room. And it's just, this drill bit is just big enough to um, go in that spot. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Let's try to center it up as best I can. Now this drill may be, may be a little big for that part, so I'm gonna go down the size. It's a little big, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do the 332nd. Actually, I, I need to reorganize my drill bits. They're kind of everywhere. When I start working, they just get thrown and they don't get organized. So this is one size up from 332nd. And I'm gonna put this down in here as far as I can. Um, because this does support some, like the a web. So this needs to have some pretty good support in it. I'm just going slow. That way, if I start to come through, I can stop. Okay. Okay, so now this pin will go down pretty quick, pretty far. I'll go down about that far. I actually have a pin vise here. I'm going to go in. Now I'm going to go in by hand with the pin vise and go a little further. Ideally, I like this pin to come down to kind of where this knot is. The reason I took the drill bit out is I started to go through a little bit here with this larger drill bit. So we're just going to go slower by hand. And I can, you can put your finger on your drill bit and then take it out and then you can kind of get a sense of how far down it is. So now it's going to that knot. So the reason I want to go past that knot <clears throat> is because the resin's thicker there. And I want this uh, thin part of the web to have support in it. So just like that. So now if I take that out, it goes you can see it goes pretty good fair amount past that knot, you know, about eighth of an inch. It doesn't even hurt, doesn't hurt to go even more. Just 
like that. Okay, so I'll go there nicely. Now, I do have another part of this web that needs to be fixed. And I think we're gonna look at that before I do the next part. So this is the part where, I believe it's broken off, yeah. I'm not sure if this was glued on before or what they did, but so I'm wondering. So it looks like this is broken. I don't know if I'll be able to get this out of here. Let's see. This part had a male key on it and it's broken off inside the web here. It looks like this was glued previously which is kind of dumb because if you're ever going to transport these things, you got to be able to take them apart. I'm trying to see if it fits in there. I know the last one I did, I made it so, I made it so um, this all came apart. It looks like that goes like that. This part here, Hold on. Man, this is really kind of messed up. Now I'm looking at it. Okay, this does not go there. This one goes here, I think. Yeah, that one goes there. And I got this, I don't know, I put putty around it. It's just, I don't get it, man. They really kind of screwed this up. I'm going to take this excess putty off. I'm glad this one didn't break off in there. Some taken off. There's some uh, putty in here. They like put putty on it or something. That goes right here too. So this key's in like this. On this side. Okay, now I can't tell. I may have to go back and look at photos of what I did earlier because I gotta remember how this goes together. This has a key, ah, which, okay, which goes here, like that. Alrighty, I think I know what happened here. All right, so that goes like that, this goes like this, okay. Yeah, so all these parts go together to form a really big web like that. And just this just has one like this. So since I have this apart and it's easier to work with with a part, I'm gonna go ahead and get these parts pinned together. And so for this, I'm not gonna glue it. I need to be able to ship this. I'm gonna put a 1 16th inch brass rod or even maybe, I'll start with a 1 16th, and this one I just I have to do by hand because um, you just have to, because it's really a tight area to work in. So I just try to center it. before they put putty in these keys. I think they had it glued together. So maybe whoever had bought this when they got the piece, maybe they paid someone to paint it and then when they got it, they uh, glued it together. That's kind of what I'm thinking. 
this again, like to put, try to get this go down as far as possible. And then this has a very small key on it. I'm trying to think what I did on the last one. I think I was able to, <laughs> it's tricky, but I was able to uh, put a key on it. Yeah, sand it flat just a little bit. Yeah, see that's putty right there. That's not resin. I think it's putty. So now I'm gonna do my best to put a, a pin right in the middle of this key. It's very thin, it's hard to do. If I do it right, there'll be a pin and then the rest of the key will be on the side of the pin to keep it from spinning in place. So you can see here, I kind of got a notch in the key where the pin goes. So that's where my pin gonna go. And we're gonna really um, solidify that. The resin's pretty thin here, so it is a challenge to work with. Hey, Ellen, you're with Miss Thompson. My son's in the middle of homeschooling, so I gotta yell down and tell him what he's gotta do next. And because I don't, my videos are very on the fly, I don't start recording. real carefully. I'm starting to go through the resin here, but that's okay. I'm gonna, I'd rather have a little bit of putty work there and have a decent pin in there to support this guy. Okay, so now my pin is, it's about an inch long, maybe three quarters of an inch, which should give me enough support in there. So let me get a 1 16th inch brass rod. <clears throat> Maybe I'm going to rough it up. so thin I kind of went through the resin a little bit that's okay we're gonna we're gonna make it work by the time I'm done you won't be able to tell so I'm just gonna let this kind of the so that you can see the kind of the, the rock came through by there I think I think you can see it So I'm just like, I'm actually gonna just let that glue fill in that area of the web, it's okay. But that should give me a nice pin and support for that area. This is what I did on the, on the last one I did, not I remember. I got the brush hose. So we're gonna go and put some setter on that. I'm going to cut this a little bit longer than I think. So 
reason to have it lewd. See how I did on my pinning. Hopefully it lines up. Oh, uh, we're pretty close. Okay, my pin's a little bit long, so we're gonna cut it. I'm just gonna make the hole a little bit deeper. Again, I'd rather have this going really far in this hand to give it the support it needs. in a little bit. The nice thing about using the 1 16th brass rod is it's pretty pliable and I think that's the way it goes. Let's see. I go this way. I should have marked it before I did this so I know exactly which because not a Apparent, right, there we go. Now it fits pretty good. It's not apparent right away which way these go in. Okay, so that's how that's going to go. Yeah, it comes up like that. I had it going in the wrong way. It's a really pretty tight fit, so I'm going to take my drill, my uh, pin vise, and the web needs to kind of angle this way a little bit, so I'm going to take my pin vise and just kind of make that hole a little, and angle it just a little bit. So it's a better fit. Yeah, but I think it's fine. Okay, looks good. Okay, so that was pinned. So you see all the work it took just to get that to fit. <laughs> just that one piece. Um, just stop messing with it because it fits pretty good. I don't want to mess it up. So, all right, so there's one side. That side's done. Okay, so now let's work on this side again. So we know that this is gonna get pinned here. And then this, has to go, I'm gonna pin this the same way I just did that side. Right here, I'm gonna put a 1 16th inch pin on this guy. I'm gonna, again, flat, sand a little flat spot on this. Just on my drill pit, it has something to kind of bite onto. So I'm not going to record that. I'm going to do um, do this the same way because it's the same process. Drill, drill, pin it like that. Um, and then I'm going to, man, I'm really bummed at this. I may just have to try to, because I don't think this key is going to come out. I think it's stuck in there. 
pretty sure this has been glued. So I think if I just pin it, hopefully it won't rotate. Um, ideally I had some little, I don't have any, some uh, square tubing or square stock. Yeah, that's glued in there. So I'm gonna use uh, some 332nd brass rod. Let's see if I can get this in there. If it's a tight enough fit, it won't spin. And it's not very heavy, but. I don't wanna glue it together because I, I had to glue it to the hand and then shipping it would be impossible. So I came through, which is no big deal. I can fix that. Uh, and then I gotta see how this goes together because it's not obvious. I think it goes like this. to look at that because it's not obvious the direction this goes. I'll go back and look at the one I did a couple years ago. So I don't have a lot of room here. the pins in as long as I can because it just gives them more material to bite onto. Let's see how far is that pin in there. That should be pretty good. accelerator on it. Like that. And then I will go ahead and cut this off. Again, I always cut it longer than you think. It's a pretty tight fit, so this should support this weight, no problem. So instead of having a, a resin key there, there'll be a metal pin that you can use to put this together with. So what I can do is, um, yeah, it's a good fit. It's a nice tension. This just a little shorter. So this will get, yeah, this will work. Okay. All right, that's not too bad. Not as bad as I thought. And then I got to pin this. Nope, that goes on the other side. This will go pin like the other one I did. And this comes out from down here. <coughs> Excuse me. So now that I have 
this one I can do later off camera. The same process. Now that I kind of have that pinned together, I can go ahead and glue and pin this together. And again, I've got um, a 1 8 inch rod here. Actually, I know that's too big. Uh, 3.30 seconds. in here I'll go in really nice okay so let's rough that up sorts of ears out, which is fine. I want that. Okay. Clean up any glue that comes out. Got to clean up right there where I kind of came through a little bit and a little sanding. Take care of that. I want to clean up this surface right here because it's actually a really good fit. I don't want any excess glue on it to prevent that from fitting better. Okay, there's that. Where's the hand? There's the hand. It's actually a pretty short pin. So I just take a little bit off the time until it... Sorry for the dog. Coco, quiet. Okay, I'm gonna try to make that. A little more deeper. Okay. It's a little bit bigger. I have some a little bit of cleanup to do. At the end of the world. All right, that's a pretty good fit. So we're gonna glue that on there. out, fill in some of the gaps. And I'll sand that little seam down once it's dried. Okay. So once this dries, I'll sand this down and get rid of that little gap there. And fill in that little spot there with some putty. All right, so now, Let's put the hand back on them. Now for this I use, uh, I want to use a one eighth inch rod. So my camera stops recording after 30 minutes and instead of telling you, instead of just start keep recording a different folder, it just says 
we stopped recording, so I'm not sure what you saw last. Um, so I'm going to put that hand on now. I've got a, um, a uh, 3 16th inch drill bit here, and I'm just going to drill a big hole right in the middle of the hand. Do the same thing here. Center of the hand or the arm. Actually, let's add a brain part. That's actually that's actually, that's actually five thirty second was on when I'm using five thirty second, sorry. Not uh, not one eighth. Second, let's get five thirty second on this end. Like that. Let's see. So I'm just making the hole bigger than my pin. So I've got some wiggle room and for the glue to really bite onto. do any gluing or anything I want to make sure that I can put it together and have it line up on this instead of super glue. Give me a little more working time to get it lined up. Okay. Now I see what happened. I was like, why isn't this going back in? They had, this had been broken before and they had puttied it, but now the putty is, that was there to come out. So I was like, why is this not lining up again? So it lined up perfectly before, but I lost some putty that was in there. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to go back and putty that in and re-sculpt the um the web pattern on the on the hand. Trying not to break in any more fingers on the other hand because they're so easy to break and I wish that wasn't attached right now. So I just want to make sure that I can put this on, get it lined up before I glue anything. Yeah, that's where it goes right there. All right, so I think I can do this with super glue. Epoxy takes too long to dry, and sometimes the super glue dries too fast. 
Again, I'm not doing any really, uh, it's holding the webs, but the webs don't weigh a whole lot. And by the time I putty it in, everything will be, there'll be plenty of support. So I'm gonna I don't want to really glue this together. I want to get this kind of pin in the right position on the hand. Seems to be right about there. Yeah, I've got a nice little gap there I gotta fix. Don't glue on yet. I don't want this to glue to the arm yet. I just want to be able to kind of get it, make sure it's lined up. It's want to stick. Ah, crap. Okay, well anyway. Now we get to go in reverse because it got glued to the arm. getting all these damn sales calls for job postings which aren't real. It's so annoying. The phone's constantly ringing and it's just people. It's like, hi, I'm so-and-so on a recorded line. I saw you're on one of our job sites. Like, I've been on every job site. Okay, so we're gonna hold this here for a second. work this side of the hole it kind of got messed up so I get the glue out of here yeah the pin kind of got glued slightly in the wrong spot and so now I gotta kind of fix that it's not the end of the world but I gotta make sure I get the glue out of here before I start drilling so I don't get glue all over my drill bit Go up a little bit size. We'll get there eventually. It's hard to do this when it's all put together already. That's where it's gotta go. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, so there's a lot of putty that was in here that got That fell out for me working on it. So I'm just gonna go in here and feed some super glue into there to where that pin is in the hand and run down that hole and fill it in. And then it's just a matter of filling the gap with some, I'll do some, use, use, use some maze to do that. I'm just gonna kick it off here. Alright, 
And once that's dry, that's not ever gonna come off again. <laughs> so you can see I've got some uh, gap filling to do. Um, got some glue that just ran out of here, no big deal. I'm gonna sand that down to re-sculpt the, uh, the webs on the arm, but okay. So there's that. <clears throat> I'll super glue this off camera, that finger. So, um, the next part of this, I'll let this dry, I'll put A's in there. I'm gonna pin this other side of the, the web. And then um, when I have the A's out, I'll fill in the gaps around the arms here with A's so that I can dry overnight. And then once that's done, um, what else? I think the feet fit really good already. Don't think I need to do anything there. What else? Oh uh, yeah, basically just filling the gaps around the arms that, I don't know who did this, but it looks terrible. Or they, when they stripped it, the, the putty came out because there's putty here, but there's no putty here, which is weird. So yeah, so the next step is to do some AVA work. Um, so once I'm ready for that, I'll come back. All right, so next step is to fill in those gaps with some A's. This is my video before I really need to get some new A's. This is pretty old and it's, it still works, but it's really, good A's is more pliable and um, this has just gotten hard over the, the two years I've had it. I just don't use it enough to justify having, you know, I always get the biggest thing. This is the four pound kit. I should have gotten like a half pound kit. But, uh, so you just mix it equal parts. Um, you can't wear gloves, I don't, because this is really isn't that sticky right now. Just kinda, I just kinda guesstimate, look at the size of the ball I have. We're gonna mix it together. And I like to do it on my workbench, so I clean it off and fold it and roll it. This is way more than I need. I always mix more than I need. So this takes uh, 24 hours to cure completely. And this will start to harden up pretty good in about an hour. Um, So you can actually, you, you can paint on this um, pretty much right after, you know, I, I've painted on this stuff like a few hours after I've applied it. <laughs> it's just something really small, like I'm in the middle of painting and I see something I gotta fix. I'll mix up a tiny bit amount. I'll put it where it needs to go and I'll start painting right over it shortly afterwards. It doesn't shrink or anything, which is one of the reasons I really like this, it doesn't shrink. A lot of, Anytime you use like an air uh, filler that air dries, it'll shrink because as the moisture leaves it, it takes up less space, so it shrinks. So a two-part epoxy is usually the best way to go. Now, I used to have solve set, which is the Aves kind of solvent solution. I'm out of that. I'm just getting a little bit of water to help smooth it with some Q-tips and my sculpting tools to kind of get where I wanted to go. I find Q-tips are actually the best. I like them on. I pinned the rest of the web and it all fits, fits together now nicely. So this is the, once this is done on Spidey, those gaps are filled. Um, I just gotta let it dry. And then I'll look at, um, I'll, I'll try to get it in primer tonight. Let it dry for a few hours today. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix this um, gap here in the, where we fix the arm. I glued the uh, pinky on the other side. So that's fixed. Awesome camera work as usual, shaky, shaky, shaky. All right, so I got a little bit here. I'm just gonna fill this in. Make sure my mic's turned on. I got this new mic and I always forget to turn it on. <coughs> Excuse me. So 
When you do the eggs, you just want to pack it in wherever you're filling. Just put a little water on my finger. Uh, Fiji, uh, Vinceville Customs did a test a while ago about using water with Aves. And um, it's pretty interesting. Came up with some pretty cool conclusions about using water. It's not the best thing to use. Um, I'm just using because I don't have any more of the Solvacent and it's expensive. Smooth it out and blend it in. So I've got minimal amount of sanding to do or re sculpting. I'll know better after I prime it if I gotta go do any kind of additional fixing. Probably should have let this dry and sand it. I'll probably just wait till tomorrow. We got another project I can work on in the meantime a, a base I'm repainting for someone. I just kind of started working on. I could work on the base of this. I could work on Okay, so what I don't want to do, I'm gonna put a little more in there. It's better to build it up and sand it down. And I have to redo it again later. So that's gonna what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna build this up a little bit. And I may have to do additional a little bit of putty work because a lot of times you don't get it the very first time but that can be done with spot putty okay now i got two more stairs way too much tools are pretty pretty gnarly all the dried up aves on them just scraping off that sand this down a little bit right here it's got a little bit of a bump but that's okay I have a little too much there and sand it down I have to go back and add more later I'm gonna try to get some of this out of the web right there and once this dries I'll go and I'll scribe in the new web after this dries I find it easier to do that when it's hard I say that, but now I'm, I say that, but now I'm going to try it here. Let's see. All 
right, so looks pretty good. You need help, buddy? You sure? All right, I thought I heard you call my name. If you need help, let me know. I'm trying to paint and help my son with schoolwork is <laughs> can be challenging sometimes. All right, now we're gonna go in here and try to fill in some of these gaps here. This is where I wish my A's was a little newer. All right, so I'm gonna do this, because you don't need to see this whole process. I'm gonna fill this in, and then um, I'm gonna let it dry. But I see, I do like to take a wet Q-tip and especially in areas like this where I got to blend kind of like two organic shapes. I find that it, it blends easier. It looks better. I can feather a little bit better. So ideally with these areas, I don't have to go and like do any sanding or anything. They just fend, fill in and blend perfectly. So I'm gonna do this, the rest of this, and then when we come back to this part, uh, we'll do some priming. Okay, so while I wait for the apes to dry on the Spider-Man, I went and filled the gaps on the arms and all that stuff. Um, I'll probably have to sand that down a little bit and do some more filling once it's done, but I got the majority of it done. I'm gonna work on the base here. So the first thing I need to do, as I, as I remember, as I said in my uh, introduction, I've got a repair here, I've got a, I've kinda got a, fix. So someone repaired it, but they didn't do a very good job of the repair. So I need to go fix the repair. <laughs> so this obviously chipped out. They glued it in, um, but it's not done very well. So we're going to do it correctly. Um, it's actually pretty easy. We need a little, uh, well, first I need to, this is a little too high. So when they, when they put this chip back in, it's too high. So I need to bring it down a little bit. I'm just gonna use a 100 grit sanding stick here. Try to flatten it out a little bit. And then I'm just gonna use a little body filler to fill it in. brush here to brush away the dust so I can <clears throat> see better what I'm doing. And I can still, I can feel it's high. So I'm gonna come in here with a file, I think. Yeah, that's not gonna work. The chip is high, so when they glued it back in, it's sitting above the rest of the surface. I can, I can feel it. I could get a Dremel, but I, I try to avoid a Dremel at all costs because it's really easy to go too far, too quick when you're Dremeling something. So, I, I, you know, I'd rather do this a little slower and this way. So I'm just gonna try to stand this down and, yeah, I guess it'll feel it's raised a little bit. What I need is I need a coarser grit sandpaper. See, I think that's some, uh, I got some, this is some 40 grit. I really just want to stand that for a chip. I 
Here we get. Now we're getting somewhere. Body filler. We'll see. Let's see what this looks like. Well, it feels like when I'm done. Body filler may be a little overkill. Maybe my um, talcum powder and super glue kind of filler. I think it still feels a little high. It's important when you're doing stuff like this just to run your fingers over things because. To me, visually it looks even, but when you feel it, it's not. It's real important to use your, your fingers. Your fingers, the tips of your fingers are very sensitive. They can feel things that you can't see. That feels pretty good. Yeah, I think we're there. So now what I'm, now what I'm feeling, I'm just feeling the, the edge. Okay. And I want to get all this dust out of the, those little the crevices because whatever filler I use won't stick if there's dust in there. Okay. So I think, let's see, what is this? Is this the resin or is this glue that I see chipping out here? I got some stuff here that's kind of chipping out, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. Anything that's loose, I'm gonna fill it anyway. Okay, get rid of that stuff. And I think my best bit is use my my glazing putty, my Evercoat. I need to get. Do, 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 do. Da, 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 da. So I normally don't use paper as a mixing thing, but I'm out of cardboard. <laughs> I've used all my scrap cardboard. Um, they make Bondo boards. Um, it's basically a piece of plastic that you can use to mix Bondo and filler on, and then it cleans up relatively easily. I had one, but I think I lost it a while ago. So I'm gonna mix up some of this little filler. Get one of my smaller spreaders. So you, I buy these spreaders like this from uh, Harbor Freight. They come in like four packs. And this what's great, I'll do one right now because they're so cheap. So you want a smaller one, you just take an X-Acto blade, actually make a small one and you just score it like this. I you just score it and then it'll, it should come apart. <laughs> so score it again. This blade is kind of dull. Usually it just breaks apart. And I try to show you something on something interesting and it's not working. Well, usually they just break apart. So I know this material, the little more expensive ones, and break apart easily. <laughs> All right, so I guess I'm a. And I like to put my sometimes when I'm making making mixing a small amount of this, I like to put my hardener to the side. Because that can, um, the more hardener you put, the less work time you have. And I want to have some work time. I can tell this uh, glazing putty's getting a little old. It's not cr quite as creamy as it used to be. So I bought that over a year ago. So it's lasted me a good while. I just want to have some working time. So I don't want to put a ton of hardener in it. So the more hardener you put, the faster it cures. Also, it's like anything else. The more you mix up at one time, the faster it kicks off. <clears throat> the hotter it is, the more it faster it kicks off. This is more than enough. You can see I'm kind of kneading it. I'm pushing down on it as I mix. That um, helps get rid of any air bubbles as you're mixing it. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little bit here. I'm gonna push it down pretty hard. I want it to go in those little crevices.
and I'm going to build it up a little higher than I need. Hopefully I get this done with one application. Ideally, when you put this on there, you can kind of feather it too. We'll put our folks back on. So I don't have a whole lot of hardener in here, so this is going to take a little while to dry. I can feel it starting to kick off a little bit now, but in order for me to sand it, it's going to dry. Um, really dry up pretty hard. So not a lot on here. If I'm using a lot of filler, um, I will start to kind of sand it when it's just starting to kick off to get the excess off and then wait till it's harder, harden up all the way to sand it to the final. So I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna sand it and we'll come back. Okay, so we're just gonna keep doing kind of multiple things at the same time while stuff dries. So while that uh, filler dries, I'm going to put a magnet in this light, this kind of beacon thing right here. So I can take this apart and pack it better. So the first one I did of these, um, I glued a lot of this together. Like I glued this together. I glued the tights. And if you do that, you can use the original packing um, that this came in. So I'm gonna do my best to use as much as the original packaging as possible because Packing one of these is a nightmare. Um, it's just a bitch. So I'm gonna throw a magnet in this. So this is one more thing that can come off. And these are quarter inch magnets. That doesn't have to be strong. It just be enough to keep it from uh, coming out. So pretty easy. I've shown this before. So I've got a quarter inch drill bit here. I'm gonna drill a hole on this guy. Try to get it centered if you can. Oh, it's hollow. This guy in the center. Again, this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It's just to hold it in place. So it doesn't like so. And I'm gonna throw, we'll put two in there. And I probably don't have to even glue these in because let's see. Using a drill bit is a good idea. So check the polarity. So if that was repelling, then I know that's going to go in the right way. I need to check in here, make sure that hole's deep enough to put two of these in there. Yep, there it is. Throw a little glue in this hole. Sorry, I'm off camera so I can see what I'm doing. And then I like to, especially I'm putting a magnet in the key like this, that's kind of deep. I'll throw some accelerator on there. And that way when I throw the magnets in, it dries pretty quick. And I can take the, sorry, I'm off camera, so I have to look down in this thing, make sure that the magnets are in the right spot. It's hard to see. That 
Can that work out the way I thought it would? <laughs> I got too much ooze out from the glue, and I gotta dig it out. Oh man, that should have been an easy thing, and now I gotta dig out glue. <laughs> too much. So I got a little tool here. I'm gonna dig out the glue. Not the end of the world, but. Not the best either. And they don't seem to be attracting very well. Alright. Sorry, I'm off camera because that's to see what I'm doing. Alright, so I just keep digging the spool and I'll come back. Okay, so I put the magnets in and now it's just a little, it's not super strong, but it's just enough to keep it from kind of wiggling around too much. So, so now I can ship that separately and that's good to go. And I can paint that separately, paint this separately, and that's good. Um, so these parts go together like this, like I showed before. And I'm gonna paint them separately. I need to prime, the, I need to wash them and prime them um, before I do that. I'll probably go do that next. Come on. There we go. Yeah, so that's gonna go together like that. So I'm gonna wash these, I'm gonna prime them um, along with this. And then I'll also along with the other part of this tower. Which is this part here and this part. So I'm gonna go get these a bath, we'll wash them, we're gonna get them primed, and maybe we'll throw some paint on these today. Um, it'd be kind of cool to get some paint on part of this. So we're kind of going all, jumping all over the place on this piece, but um, let's see how, how the putty's doing on the other part. Ah, okay, so this is dry now. This is how it works, this is how my brain works, I just jump all over the place. So this is pretty dry now, so I'm gonna come in here, this is uh, some, 240. I'm gonna sand this. And then I get this kind of all washed in front at the same time, then I can work on this tower. So when you're sanding body filler, again, it's really important to kind of feel over it as you're doing it. Exposure's a little bright. But also, you can see here how it's a really smooth feather. So it, it, the body filler, no definite line, it's a smooth transition. That's the sign of a good repair with body filler too. When you start seeing a hard edge like this, I'm not sure that's showing out, there's a little bit of a hard edge, then it's not a good transition. That'll show up in your primer and your paint. So you want to feather that as best as you can. So now that I'm that, that far, I'm going to take this uh, ultra fine, super fine sanding sponge, about 400, and go over it. And now I feel that, and I don't feel any filler or anything. I see a little, this little spot right here needs to be sanded. But yeah, it's perfectly smooth. I think, if I remember correctly, I think on the last one I did take this key off. I think, um, I think I grinded that key off because the split, I need to ask my client if he wants me to do that. I need that before I try and paint this thing. I don't have a belt sander. Um, a belt sander would be the ideal thing. I mean, that creates a lot of dust. Because technically you can still, it'll still work in that base without that key. I think it will. 
And the nice thing if you do that, then you can kind of rotate, since it's a circle, you can rotate it. It's gotta work because you see guys are just playing this thing without that big um, brick base all the time because it takes so much space. So a lot of guys opt not to use that. And they just play this piece. I think you get just the gist of this. We're gonna sand this till it's smooth. We're gonna wash all the parts and get them in some primer. Okay, continuing on with the prep. We got a few parts primed. Spidey, I went in and did the A's on the joints and stuff. That's drying. Um, so I gotta wait to wash and prime him. Did hear back from my client and he didn't want to be able to, st I primed this already, but um, he did reply and said he wants to be able to display Spidey without the brick and base. So it's just dusty right now because I just got done grinding off this big key. Now the problem with that is that when you put it down, it's not flat. So it's got that big key in the middle and this part right here around it is convex or concave. Concave? Convex, concave. So we gotta flatten this out. So we're gonna do this with some body filler. Again, not the hardest thing to do. This takes a little time. So we're gonna get the big spreader out this time. And we're gonna frost the bottom of this like a cake. And then we'll go out with the, with the power sander and sand it smooth. So it'll sit flat and uh, won't wobble. Because uh, it does, taking this off does not, comp does not compromise the kit at all. I don't know why they why they did that to be honest. So I'm gonna get a, a big spreader here. Again, using my non-traditional Bondo mixing board. Yeah. Pad of paper. I'm gonna get a fair amount because I'm gonna I need to fill in this area. I'm gonna make it a little, again, put a little mound on it so I can see it smooth. Let's zoom out here a little bit. is not the best way to mix Bondo. They actually do, they are, I said they make Bondo boards. They also, they also make Bondo boards that have wax paper that comes off. So it's this similar type of thing, but it's just it's a, a pad of wax paper. It's actually kind of handy, because then you just pull the paper off and your mixing board is clean. You may have too much hardener here, it'll work fast. My goal was to get everything prepped today, which I think I can get pretty close. Spidey may need a little more work after I prime it. Okay. So what I did is I just went in, I went in the bottom here with an angle grinder and just grind it off. Now here I'm just gonna push real hard in that middle part. So I get good adhesion with the filler. that up. Just enough mixed up.
So I got a little clean up to do on the edges here, it's not a big deal. So that's really it, we're gonna let this dry. And I'm gonna go outside with the, the disc, disc sander and sand it smooth. So there you go, it's a little messy right now. Starting to kick off, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Once it starts to kick off, you really don't wanna mess with it because you'll screw up the application. So I'm gonna let that dry. And then, uh, I guess I'm gonna go outside and belt sand it and then um, we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so after about 30, 40 minutes of sanding and stuff, this is what the bottom looks like. Now get primed. And now it sits flat, no more wobble. So now this can be put in the brick base or it can be uh, displayed by itself. I just gave it another bath, we'll let this dry uh, really good and then I'll put some primer on it tonight. And then um, hopefully I can prime uh, Spider-Man. I got all the other parts of the, the kit primed, the, the tower and stuff got, have primer on them so those are ready for paint. Um, so this has to dry a little bit longer and then I'll dust it off and we'll throw a primer on this and this will be ready for paint. Um, so yeah, we're getting close. Um, so I guess, uh, well, I'm gonna call this, um, no, I'll wait till Spider-Man's done until I call this work in progress done. Uh, that'll be the prep video and then we'll start painting in the next video. So once uh, Spider-Man's primed, I'll come back. Okay, so I'm gonna show you where I was on prep for Spidey. So after I did all the putty work, I sprayed some uh, spray can black primer slash paint on him yesterday and let the cure overnight. So there were a few little imperfections in the surface that I didn't see until I put some paint on it or primer. So now I'm going through and I'm taking a super fine wet sanding sponge from 3M with some water and I'm just giving it a light sanding. And I'm going through in a few places, but I'm gonna give this another coat of uh, black primer. And I'm doing black because my client wants, um, I guess it's a classic Spider-Man look. It's a really, sorry, one second. My alarm for my son is going off. There we go. Uh, it's a really dark blue, almost black. So we're gonna go with that for the, for the blue. So I'm gonna base coat it in black and I'm gonna highlight it in blue. And then we get a really nice and deep, dark, almost black blue. So there's a few little imperfections in the surface. Um, let me see, there's, there's one spe specifically right here. I'm not sure if it'll show up in camera. You can just kind of see a nice shine of light right there by my finger. So I'm still gonna sand that out. Um, my putty work looks really good in here. It's kind of popping out now, you can see it. Right there, so I'm gonna sand that out. And this, instead of using putty, I'm just gonna sand it out. It's not very deep. It's just a, it's just a error in the casting. So um, I can just sand it out, it'll be fine. So today's goal is to get the blue done because I can't do anything else on Spidey till the blue is done because I gotta let that dry overnight to mask off of the red. And uh, on this guy, I'll use, um, I'll use masking tape, I won't use, won't use silly putty because I got way too much area to cover. Um, and I don't know, I just like the masking tape better. So I'm just sanding until that's gone. And there's no detail here, that, so there's nothing to sand. Like, there's no detail to sand away. So it's okay. But now that little imperfection is gone. Uh, my putty work in the arm looks really good. Um, I was, really wasn't sure until I got some primer on it, but it looks really good. It's, it's hard to tell, especially in an armpit, if it looks good, but it blended really well. What I did after the Aves, I let that Aves dry for about, oh, about eight hours. And then I kind of sanded the Aves down a little bit. And then I went back in, I didn't videotape it, but I went back in with some, just some Bondo filler on my finger and I just kind of smeared it in there to smooth it out a little bit and sanded that down. That took a little bit of time because my Bondo application wasn't the best. Um, so it took a little time to sand it down, but the the seams look good. The repair on the arm here looks really good. 
So, um, I may have to go back in and scribe some of the webbing, or I'll just paint, I'll just paint them in. I was painting the webbing there. But, uh, it, yeah, this, is, this step right here, it's a real quick sanding. It's nothing, you know, just spending a, a couple minutes, probably 10, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, sanding over this layer of primer. And then I'll add, um, I'll go back and hit it again with some black Steinol res. And that'll be my black base coat. I won't need to put black paint down because the primer is black. And as long as I have a good surface, I can just use that as my base coat. So I'm gonna do this. I'll give them another bath. There's a lot of washing. I always, I always, whenever I do a step like this, sanding, I always give it a, a, a bath in soapy water because your hands gotta oil, have oil on it. These sanding sponges have been used for other things. You just can't wipe it down. You gotta get all the, as much of the contaminants off as possible because um, nothing's worse. And it happens to me every, not too often, but once in a while, <clears throat> especially when you're masking with masking tape, is if you don't get all the dirt and contaminants off, um, you'll get some lifting. And it usually doesn't lift down to the resin because my prep works really good. It usually l lifts down to the base coat. So that's usually means because I had I, I didn't get all the dirt off. Um, so that's when that happens. So if like, <coughs> if after I paint this blue, let it dry and I mask, and I'm gonna go take the paint, the masking tape off and it goes down to the, the blue, so they paint red, that means there was dirt on the paint. So if it goes down to the resin, that means I didn't wash the resin enough or there's uh, there's mold release or something like that. So you know right away when you when you take your tape off, if there's lifting, depending on which layer it lifts down to, you know where your contamination is. So that's really it for this. Just a real quick kind of light sanding with this 3M super fine sanding sponge. And this sanding sponge isn't new, it's, it's kind of used. So new, it'd be pretty aggressive. I, I would have taken most of this primer off, but the surfer was pretty good. Um, so I didn't need to sand it down too much. I had probably two or three little imperfections that were bugging me. Um, I probably could have left them and no one would have noticed, known any better, but I noticed them and they bugged me. So I'm going to take them out. So I'm just gonna wipe it off real quick with the towel, see where we are. You can't see what you're doing until you, until you dry it off. So it's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna give this a bath. We'll get it sprayed back in black and then uh, we'll do the blue. Also, part of the prep. So I finished off getting this part of the, finished this off yesterday, the bottom of the base, you can see here. And uh, these are all primed. There were a couple little areas on the top here that I went in and did some spot puttying. So I'll hit those with primer again today. And then those are ready for paint. And then the little beacon, the little light beacon, after I got this done in gray primer, oops, just pan down so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I sanded it, I just did a quick sanding, uh, light sanding, and then I hit it with some white primer because everyone I've seen this has kind of a glowing green. So you need to do the kind of the bright yellowish green, do a white base. So that's the white base coat for that. Cause I got to paint this first, clear coat it, let it cure, and then mask that off before I can do the next step. So this is, this piece right here is like a two day process. Cause you got to paint it, clear it, let it cure. Then you can mask it and go on. So that piece right there is like a two day process. Um, and that's it for now. So we'll give Spidey a bath. We'll get him back in black and then we'll shoot some blue paint on him. Okay, so Spidey is all prepped and ready to go. And this, I'll call this work in progress done. So I had a couple air bubbles I had to fix after I did that round of primer. So I, I, I sanded them down, primed them, let it dry for about a couple hours. Then I saw a couple little pin holes. So I filled those, primed them again. And now, uh, we're, now I'm gonna call the prep done. He looks really good. So I'm gonna call this work in progress done and then we're gonna move on to painting, which I will start recording right now. So I'll probably upload this video tonight and depending on how far I get done with painting, maybe two videos, work in progress, technically two and three since the first video is work in progress one, but he's looking good. So um, I'm gonna let this dry a little bit longer because I just got done priming the lower part of his legs. I want that to dry up really well so I can handle it. 
I'm gonna start painting some other pieces. Uh, so as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next part.